the world is teeming with stories. Some teach about our understanding of the outside world. Others convey how peoples of the past understood it. Still others tell of what the world could be if we open our eyes to the magic in every corner. Minecraft worlds, however, often lack any explicit stories, despite having just as many to tell as the real world. I dream of a Minecraft filled with writings. This is a series of videos in which I write and format books set in Minecraft for you to use in your worlds without any restrictions. For those who share my dream, let me build you a tale of a storied library. The Well-Wisher, an oral tradition of the pastoralist village peoples. Recorded by Steve McClelland. When the world was young, and the people of the village looked not so dissimilar to the pigs they raised to eat, there lived a small boy with hair that grew down to his ankles. He spent his days playing tag with the other village children, and his nights wandering the fields and pathways in hopes of spotting a zombie. You see, the boy with long hair had heard stories of zombies and the unnerving supernatural power they wielded but he had never caught sight of one. He wanted, more than anything in the world, to see a real zombie. One evening, when the other children trudged back to their homes to rest, the boy with long hair stopped by the village well. He tossed an emerald in, splash, <laughs> clambered up the cobblestone rim of the well, and rang the bell that hung over the water. He sang, not too loud, but not too quiet. For my wish, an emerald fell in the middle of the well. If I wish upon the bell, my greatest wish will come true. As he sang, he wiggled the clapper of the bell, so it shook unsteadily and sang out a spine-chilling tone. The village people, hearing the distress alarm, ran to their homes and quickly shut the doors tight. The two town golems searched every street in the fading twilight, but they found no threat to their charger's security. Finally, the iron golem came upon the boy with long hair, sulking by the well. Why did you ring the bell? The golem asked the boy. I was wishing on the wishing bell, but it didn't come true. Ah, oh, said the golem, gently brushing the boy's hair out of his eyes. I see. You must learn, child, that this is not a wishing bell. It is our alarm bell, and when it rings, it means danger is near. Like a zombie? The boy whispered. Indeed, like a zombie. Please do not ring the bell again, unless something is going terribly wrong. The boy nodded curtly. The iron golem handed him a poppy and saw him straight to bed, but the boy did not take the lesson to heart. As the days passed, it soon became time for the boy with long hair to enroll as an apprentice. It was decided that he should work as a farmer, so he practiced sowing seed and tilling earth. His master was an unwieldy elder, who never found any of his work up to her standards. During a particularly nasty lecture, he snuck away from the deaf and half-blind woman to the village well in order to indulge his childhood fantasies. He tossed an emerald in, splash, oh, reached over the cobblestone rim and rang the bell that hung over the water. He sang, not too loud, but not too quiet. For my wish, an emerald fell in the middle of the well. If I wish upon the bell, my greatest wish will come true. The boy yanked and bent the bell's old wooden posts and made it yell its harsh warning cry. His master, startled out of her tirade, ran into her house and slammed the door, barely daring to peek out the windows. Every other villager, young and old, did the same, and the golems came out to find the threat. They searched and searched, but all they found was the boy with long hair moping by the well. Why did you ring the bell? One iron golem asked. I was bored, the boy admitted. I wanted to wish on a wishing bell. It is not a wishing bell, it is an alarm bell. 
You mustn't ring it unless there is real danger. Do you understand? I understand, the boy said. Can I go home now? The golem nodded patiently and took the boy by the hand. It saw him off to bed and tucked him in tight. As the boy slept, he dreamt of sowing bells in the field and growing a crop of zombies. The boy grew up strong and practiced his trade well. Although the village needed more wheat, the boy with long hair preferred to grow potatoes. He had heard tales of zombies carrying them on long voyages, so he knew they must find them fascinating. Sometimes his potato crops even yielded an incredible variant with mottled green flesh and a stomach-turning effect. He grew as many of these as he could. One afternoon, the boy was exceptionally bored. He watched the village people milling about glumly and set up his mind to cause a bit of excitement. Surreptitiously, he approached the village well. He tossed and let in, reached out his long arm, and rang the bell that hung over the water. He sang, not too loud, but not too quiet, For my wish, an emerald fell in the middle of the well. If I wish upon the bell, my greatest wish will come true. The bell creaked and groaned as the boy with long hair made it bellow. He watched with glee as the townsfolk hurried back to their dwellings and slammed the doors shut with shaking hands. He giggled to see the golems come out and perform their frantic search for a threat that was not there. If he could not see a zombie, he could at least have fun pretending that he saw one. Finally, one golem approached him, brow furrowed. Why did you ring the bell? No reason, the boy said, looking as honest as an enderman. Except so, the golem growled. You must remember that this is an alarm bell, child. We only ring the alarm bell when the town is in danger. Okay, only when there's danger, the boy parroted. The golem sighed, a rusty sigh, and led the boy back to his home. He went to bed early that evening and was dreaming a pleasant dream. When... Suddenly, he jolted awake. Something was knocking on his door. Cautiously, he went over to peek through the window. The boy with long hair gasped. A zombie. It was a zombie outside of his very own door. By the light of the waning moon, he gaped at its loose green flesh, clumpy dark hair, and tattered blue garments. It was even more beautiful than he ever thought it could be. The zombie burst through the door and staggered drunkenly into the boy's home. Its sunken eyes fixed upon the boy's, and then it lurched forward, tearing a piece of the boy's flesh off with its bloody, broken teeth. Screaming, the boy bolted out of his home and tore down the streets toward the town center. As he ran, he saw at least twenty other zombies, all searching for warm bodies to consume. When he reached the well, the boy fumbled an emerald into its watery depths, and desperately rang the old golden bell. He screamed, far too loud, but not loud enough. Bell ring true, and bell ring loud, bell ring out your warning sound. Wake the columns of the town, my greatest wish has come true. The zombies had noticed him now. They were incredible and powerful, and he knew they were deadly. He rang the bell faster and faster. The villagers were all already inside their homes. The horde stumbled toward the town center, closing in from all directions. Where were the golems? Why weren't they coming? The boy <laughs> laughed. Here he was, ringing his old wishing bell, while the creatures he requested were approaching to kill him. He had nowhere to run. <laughs> he laughed harder. 
No one was coming to save him. Why would they believe his pleas now? As rotten hands grasped at his cloak, the boy with long hair realized the only thing he could do. Grabbing hold of the bell, the boy swung his legs over the slippery cobblestone railing of the well and swallowed a great breath. Then, splash! He plunged into the well water. The cold numbed his fingers instantly, but he held himself beneath the dark water's surface. The great steps of golems shook the well's shaft as the town's protectors approached the horde. Their moans of hunger turned to gasps of pain under the iron limbs of the golems, but with every death screech, two more zombie voices joined the chorus. The boy chanced a gasp of air shivering intensely. His limbs paddled pitifully. He wasn't sure how much longer he could stay afloat. Beneath him, the water seemed to stretch forever, an inky esophagus threatening to gulp him down, and above him, the bell glinted in the half-moon's light. A face appeared next to the bell, the farmer who had been his teacher all those months ago. But now her wrinkled face was mottled green and her nose hung at an impossible angle. Catching sight of live prey, she lurched out over the water. Her head collided with the bell, knocking her backward, and the bell began to swing wildly. The boy with long hair watched in horror as the bell's old wooden supports creaked in protest until- Snap! Clang! The wishing bell fell straight onto the boy's head, and he went limp, falling down, 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 down. The boy was swallowed by his desire. Quick note. This story has been passed down among the village people for generations upon generations. Some version of the described events may or may not have actually taken place, but the story holds truth regardless. It is widely believed that the village described in the story experienced a zombie siege, a rare event in which many zombies organized to attack a village at the moment of Moon High. Although I have met those who claim that occurrences of such events are purely up to chance, the pastoralists and I know that continued misuse of the bell, and disrespect for the golems, allowed the zombies to infiltrate the town. Whatever you believe about the story, I hope it has entertained and enlightened you. Steve McClelland The End As always, if you liked this story, it is available in a Minecraft-friendly format in the paste bin in the description. Every section delineated by the curly markers can be pasted onto a different page of a book and quill. There are also certain symbols called section signs that help format the book. They look like this. By making any text that follows them italicized, underlined, or colored. What formatting they create depends on the letter that follows immediately after them, so a section sign followed by an O, for instance, makes the next part of the text italicized. To turn the text back to normal, input section sign R. You will need to copy and paste these signs into the book in addition to the normal text, because they don't transfer when copying and pasting in bulk, unfortunately. Minecraft just kind of ignores them when you do that. If that doesn't bother you, you could ignore them too. In any case, I hope you enjoy using this more spooky story in your worlds. It was inspired by the skin called The Wellwisher in the Minecraft Campfire Tales skin pack. I love that pack so much, it's given me so many ideas for cautionary stories that Minecraft characters would tell each other. Besides those, I have stories with more positive endings in the works as well. Anyway, have a wonderful Halloween, and with that, peace be with you folks. I will see you at another time.